In this video, I'm going to cut out the background of one image and then I'm going to insert that cutout into another image. So we're going to be using the Smart Brush and also the Refine Selection tool. And also I'll be adding a drop shadow. So I'll start with the Smart Brush and I'm just going to make a selection around this woman. And don't worry about over selecting because we're going to be creating a mask and then we can fine tune it. And we're also going to be using the refine edge tool. So that's going to take care of most of the issues. So we want to use, we want to subtract from the selection and also choose the manual brush selection tool. And we're just going to push that selection to the edges as best we can. And don't worry if you go over, if you push it too far, because then we can just hit the plus symbol to push it back in the opposite direction like I just did. So just pan across your canvas to see the other areas and just continue to push that edge. Normally I was able to just hit my space bar on my laptop to pan, but for some reason there's a glitch and it doesn't allow me to do that. So I have to go up and click the actual icon of the hand, which is a real pain. I don't know if Windows users have that problem, but I feel like there's a lot of glitches I've been encountering, maybe because I'm on a Mac. So just keep going around the, the shoes. You might wonder why I didn't select the background because it would have been easier. It's basically a solid, one solid color with the red wall and then the white area around her shoes. But I find using that method, I'm not able to use the refine tool as effectively. For some reason, it just doesn't find that edge, especially with an image where you're using hair. Just take your time doing it. I know it seems tedious, but it will be worth it. So now that you have your selection, click on Refine. And then just click over on that brush tool to the left. And then just drag your cursor around the edge of the area that you're trying to refine the edge on. You can see there's a lot of red. So this just kind of takes that red out and keeps the hair in place. Photo Director does a pretty good job with this. I was surprised. So that's just processing. Let's try this other edge on this side. In this case, I noticed a trick that I can use. If I go over and actually click the background brush tool to bring this tool right here, foreground rather, not background, and just paint the foreground back in because it's 
it's having a difficult time finding the original image to refine the edge on. So I find if you paint it back in a little bit, just wait for it to process and then go back and use the refine brush tool and try it again. That seems to do the trick. Not all the time, but for this image, it worked pretty well. And that did work really well. So I'm just going to keep going down the rest of my image. I can see red along the edge of her arm here and then a little bit down her leg. That cleaned it up really nicely. Just a little bit here. And we can always fine tune this more. Once we click OK and go back to the mask, we can change the mask and then hit refine edge and come back in and redo this as many times as we need to get it perfect. In the older versions, we weren't able to be this precise, especially the versions prior to version 10, I believe, we couldn't even use a mask and save a selection. So you had to be sure when you were doing your selection that that's what you wanted. So having the mask feature is really nice. This processing. So that looks pretty good. So let's click OK. Wait for that to process. And now we want to invert the selection and then come up and add a mask and it's removed the background and now what we need to do is click the delete selection tool and I don't know if you can see it on your screen but it removed all those additional bits that it cleaned up from the re refine edge tool so that looks pretty good now just turn on our background layer. Use the pick and move tool just to shrink her down a bit. And position her to wherever you want. I'm going to flip the layer horizontally because I want her in the opposite direction. Right about there looks good little bit more. Now I'm going to click on Effects and scroll down until you see the drop shadow and then click on Color and choose a grayish tone for the shadow and experiment with your size I, the shadow on the sunflowers is coming from the left, top left, so I'm going to move the shadow on the woman to be approximately the same area. And you can experiment with the opacity. And then click OK. And there we have it. I think that looks pretty good.